Hi, it's Steven here from Flipper Channel. It's a miserable, rainy, cold day here in Paris, Ontario. And I'm out in the shed playing with carburetors again. A number of you have asked about the extractors that we made to help extract the uh, main jet and the um, float needle um, valve seat. So I want to take a bit of time here and show those to you in more detail and how they're used. And uh, I'll even make sure I uh, um, show a drawing here in the video. And I'll find a way to uh, link to a drawing that you can download yourself. Um, look for that link in the description. And uh, then you can uh, make some yourself if you wish. So we're, we're talking about these extractors that we made. I'll uh, try and show them to a couple different cameras here and uh, we'll get some better views. So you might wonder why I've got four of them here. I've actually got two that are fitted to mangled old parts. So they've got wider, these two have wider tangs on them to fit the mangled wider slots on these old um, seats. That gives these maximum width and strength. And I've got another set that are sized to brand new parts. So they have much narrower tangs. Not quite as strong, so I don't like to use these extracting. They probably work just fine, but you do run the risk of, uh, of breaking the uh, tangs off, depending on what material you made these out of. You'll see these, these are designed to fit new parts. So they fit real snug on new parts. Now you can make these out of just about any metal you have. Um, this one was made from a bolt. Uh, this was made from uh, some steel that needed hardening in order to be strong. This was from some high strength steel. It might have been another bolt we cut off actually. In this case we had to machine a hex on the end. But I mean you could make these just with a drill press and a file, really. Um, as long as you can drill a hole, cut off a drill bit, and then file the tangs in, and maybe file some flats or use a pipe wrench. You could make these without um, a lathe and mill. Luckily I had access to my brother's lathe and mill and his machining skills and uh, we were able to make these and he's got a heat treating furnace as well so we're even able to heat treat the ones that required uh, hardening. So these extractors fit really tight, which is good. So they've got, let's clean this view up a bit. So they've got a drill bit that's sized to fit the hole and uh, some blades that are sized to fit the slot. And then they're a tight fit. As I say, we were We were tapping them in there so that we get a really snug fit. Now these can be used for extraction and installation. When you're using these extractors on particularly stubborn main jets or valve seats, it's important to have very high 
compressive force pressing the extractor into the slots so that they can't pop out as you're undoing them. So I'm showing you here with a great big C-clamp if you don't have a big vise. If you have a big vise, that's even better. And you can squeeze this firmly. And then you'll want to crack them loose just a tiny bit. So if you go too far, the clamp or the vise will prevent the threads from undoing and then you can do damage to the threads. But you want this compressive force just to give you a little crack. And then you can reset the force on your clamp or your vise and crack it a little farther. Now you may also need heat from a torch and it's also often required to get some impact force down into the threads to crack the corrosion loose from the threads. Now luckily the main jet is brass and the uh, um, housing of the carburetor is cast iron so you've got dissimilar metals so they will crack loose and they will um, come out without binding provided you can get enough force on here enough heat and that impact that I mentioned earlier and once you've got them cracked they'll come out pretty easily So now to extract the uh, float valve seat, it's the same idea. You'll see this one's really mangled from previous attempts with screwdriver. got a bigger drill bit diameter to fit that nice big lugs on the extractor to fit in the slot and we want to do exactly the same thing here we want to apply heat if necessary best not to hit your thumb when you're doing that. Ow, that hurts. And then we'll want to clamp across here. So, nice and snug. And just crack it. Adjust the force on your clamp. Again, a big vise works way better than a clamp, but if all you've got is the clamp, you can make it work. Once you've got it cracked, it should come out pretty easily. Like so. So again, I've got that drill bit. See how that works? Even for a really mangled one. It's a great, great tool. Now, installation is super easy with these tools. Um, you may recall in my previous carb video, 
I cleaned up the seats where, where these um, seal down to using a little grinder and a guide. So that's a good idea so that the rust down there doesn't cause these to leak. There's a little gasket that comes with these. Now these you do not want to over tighten. So when you get your tool on there, you just want to snug them up. You shouldn't need any sealant on that gasket if the seat's cleaned up. And then a new main jet. Jet with a gasket. Again, just snug. So that's how those installation and extraction tools work. And I'll put the drawing up and uh, you guys can have a look at that. Feel free to suggest design improvements as well, of course. Um, double check the dimensions yourself because you may find that old parts have slightly different hole diameters the new parts for example or you may want to customize the slot width another shot of my bench. Mike might want to see the GoPro rig that I use for filming. So we've got a couple of battery powered LED lights and the microphone adapter so I can connect the microphone into the GoPro for good quality sound. Here's the microphone. Hope you find that helpful. This is Stephen from Fliver Channel signing off for today.